Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Rubens Einstein. Uh, I am uh, go I'm the moderator of this panel, the Brazilian Bitcoin about the Brazilian Bitcoin ecosystem. It's a pleasure to have you all here with us. Um, I'm going to uh, organize and to moderate this debate. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all the LabitConf organization in the name of uh, Rodolfo for inviting me to, to organize and to bring all the, these four great Brazilian uh, panelists to this uh, uh, Brazilian panel. Uh, I'm going to introduce each one of them. I want first to uh, invite uh, Vital Tazumas to, to uh, tell a little bit about yourself, to present yourself to the audience, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Vital Tazumas. Uh, I always joke that it sounds like a contraceptive name, but that's the only name I have. I'm a police officer from Brazil and I represent like the civilian police of Goiás. And at the moment I'm working at the Ministry, Ministry of Justice in Brazil with a, with a different project that involves uh, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency crimes uh, in a way to, to help law enforcement around the country. So I'm really, really happy to be here and I hope we can share some good things here with all those masters here. Great, Vitaltas. Thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, right now, I want to bring uh, Safiri Felix, uh, one of the first Bitcoiners in Brazil. Uh, Safiri, you on stage, please. Hi. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. It's going to be a pleasure to share with you guys some thoughts about the Brazilian environment and also share this space with my friends. Uh, thank you so much. Great, uh, Safiri. Uh, now I want to bring to the stage Gustavo Cunha, please. Hi, thank you very much, Rubens, and uh, thank you, uh, Labitcon, for the invite to be here in this great panel. I think, uh, I'm really sure that we're going to have a very good debate here. Great, thank you, Gustavo. And uh, the last one, uh, but not uh, the middle one, one of the great guys also in Brazil, Ecos Brazilian uh, crypto ecosystem, Marco Carnu, please. Hello, everyone. It's uh, great to be with you uh, this uh, lovely afternoon. Uh, I am the technical director and the CTO of Zero Bank, which is a company uh, specializing in uh, uh, trying to make uh, the cryptocurrency uh, wallet and exchange system that your your aunt or your bum can use. Uh, and uh, we're trying to merge the, uh, we're trying to, I, I always joke that we're trying to make both uh, God and the devil speak uh, the mm -hmm. same language and, and, and uh, get along together uh, because we're trying to join the traditional banking experiment with the cryptocurrencies. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, but I am a technical guy. I'm a bits and bytes guy. Uh, so I may be perhaps the, the oddball in this uh, group, but I'll try to keep up because uh, uh, all the other panelists are just great. And I would like to uh, thank Kubins and the LA Bitconf uh, organization team for inviting me. Okay, thank you, Carnu. Uh... As you can see, we have a very eclectic uh, uh, panel. Uh, we have one economist, one Bitcoiner, one blockchain uh, scientist, and one Brazilian legal authority. So, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss about some topics here. We're gonna talk about uh, economic aspect of the Bitcoin usability and uh, regulation and crimes in Brazil regarding Bitcoin. So, I'm going to start. One uh, just uh, making a question uh, for the for the first of uh, you. I'm going to talk to. I mean, each one of you obviously can will, will be able to talk about this topic. But first of all, I want to call Safiri Felix to start with the, this uh, uh, first question. Uh, Safiri, uh, Brazilians uh, have used Bitcoin in what situations? What? How do you see the market today? In, how are Brazilians using Bitcoin for real? Okay, we are in a very special moment in Brazil. Our basic interest rates are in the lowest uh, levels in history. And we also have uh, 
a lot of uh, attention about potential inflation uh, increase in Brazil. So in this, in this framework, Bitcoin is almost the perfect uh, fit because it's a very simple way to for a regular person to uh, diversify their portfolio and also get exposure for a digital global commodity that also has relationship with dollar. So in this moment, when we see uh, REIA is getting pressure from the market and a lot of people question, questioning about their sustain, sustainability, uh, Bitcoin is, is, is starting to, to, to be a BC as a very good alternative. So basically Brazilians use Bitcoin as a alternative asset. And also we see some use cases related to remittance and basically the, this kind of stuff. Uh, all the tokenization environment in Brazil is it's re really on the early days. So we expect that probably next year with the uh, CVM sandbox, it's our uh, capital markets authority, probably gonna see more use cases and more alternatives for Brazilians and also for Latin America investors. Great, thank you, Safiri. Uh, now I want to call uh, to, to talk to Gustavo Cunha, that is a Brazilian economist, and uh, have your opinion about uh, this uh, subject. I think, I, I think the, the, the way that Brazilians are using Bitcoins, it's definitely the way that uh, Safiri said. Uh, but I, I'd like to join to this discussion, not, not just the Brazilian way, but that's, uh, that's this uh, word about inflation. It's not really just a Brazilian issue nowadays. Right? With all the central banks in the world issuing a lot of money, uh, we've seen the Central Bank of Europe, uh, Brazil, and uh, US uh, issuing a lot of money. So there's a lot of concern about uh, inflation in the world going forward. A lot of discussions in the, in the economic space about that. And uh, of course, Brazilian, it's, it's a, what you can say a high bet in terms of inflation. Brazil has a history of high inflation in the past. So all the Brazilians are more. Not, uh, I cannot say user to that, but they know how uh, inflation can be very bad for the economy and for, for the Brazilians. So uh, Bitcoin in, the, in this sense can be a kind of a, a reserve for that or can be a kind of hedge for that. And I'm sure that uh, there's a lot of people in the world looking for that and also in, in Brazil. So I can see that in Brazil also, and uh, when you have a history of uh, economic crisis in some countries, uh, there's some countries that there's a history of uh, that the people increase the amount of Bitcoin that they buy. So uh, when you kind of have a government issue in Brazil in the last years have kind of had a, a very turbulent uh, economic uh, and political environment. And of course, that uh, of, uh, helps the, uh, on the increase of, uh, of the utilization of uh, Bitcoin as well. So I would like just to add that because uh, this use Bitcoin as a reserve currency or a reserve asset. It's, for me, it's a Brazilian thing for sure, but it's also a global thing. But when you look specifically for Brazil, I think the, the volatility on the, the economic environment and political environment also have helped a lot uh, uh, on this adoption. Okay, great, great, Gustavo. Uh, now I want to, to have uh, Marcos Carnot's opinion, uh, especially because Marcos is the director of uh, the Zero Bank that is bringing some usability to the to the Bitcoin, right? So, Marco, uh, how do you see uh, this uh, subject now? Well, uh, I think that Brazilians uh, Brazilians Brazil is a, a, a poorish country in the sense that uh, we uh, people don't make that much uh, money, and the Brazilians are always in the lookout for ways to stretch their money, to make their money value more. So uh, Brazilians are, uh, Brazilians look at Bitcoin as a way to make their money uh, have returns, to, to make with their money what they couldn't make in the, in the stock exchange or, or other instruments, but 10 times faster and 10 times uh, uh, more sometimes when the, the ties are, fa are favorable to us. So Brazilians uh, look and understand Bitcoin primarily as a way to get more Brazilian highs. Uh, I, I always joke that most of Bitcoiners I know couldn't possibly care any less about Bitcoin or the beautiful uh, technical infrastructure it has or its uh, beautiful 
uh, uh, political and counterculture uh, associated with it. Uh, most Brazilians care most about Bitcoin because Bitcoin allows them to do in uh, weeks or months what other kinds of investments would uh, take uh, months or years. Uh, and, uh, and that's the primarily, the primarily use that, uh, that people are, are making of Bitcoin here in Brazil. Okay, thank you, Marco. Uh, Vitautas, uh, keeping a little bit further, I would like to ask you, uh, in, the, in the past few years, uh, the usability of using and sending and receiving Bitcoin was not the most simple thing to do. You know, like the, the tools and everything was not so uh, 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 play to go and easy for the most part of the people. Now we have some uh, tools that are more efficient, more easy. I mean, you download an app, it's very easy to use it. And also now we have the Pix that changes completely the, the scene in Brazil because uh, the Pix uses a, a, a key, like your personal key, right? It's like, it's like having a, a, the, the, the personal address in the Bitcoin wallet. So do you think that it's going to be easier for Brazilian to understand how to use Bitcoin since Pix now is in the market? Well, uh, Rubens, uh, it's very, uh, the question is really interesting and it's, it's really important to tell uh, a little, not a little, it's a big difference between Bitcoin and Pix. Uh, I mean, the government is trying to do exactly what you said to make these things uh, easier more palatable for people to use. I believe uh, more and more people will start using PICs. But the thing is, uh, it's, it's a problem, let's say, is the uh, higher level of centralization that the central bank has on PICs. So uh, it goes away of all the, the, the ideas of Bitcoin, why it was created. But you were right, like people will start using PICs more and maybe that's a, a, a passage, that's a way, that's a door for people to start using Bitcoin more and more. Uh, uh, I, I believe that makes uh, easier for people and PIX was, was a way uh, the government found to try not to, uh, not to get Bitcoin out of the way, but to make people understand that the government can still uh, uh, provide some tools, provide some things, and people will not need to use Bitcoin, but that's not right. I think uh, people will start using Bitcoin more and more, and PIX may be just a passage, just a way of going to crypto. Okay, great. Great to, to, to hear that. I, yeah, Gustavo, please go I ahead. Just ask, uh, add one thing, because there are some discussions here that we are kind of dealing with. Uh, Bitcoin as a, a kind of reserve currency, store of value, uh, which is uh, people store that as a commodity to earn some money in the future or to uh, hedge inflation. And the other story is about means of payments. There you compare with uh, peaks and, and these things. And uh, for me, and uh, maybe you, someone here can have a different opinion, so that's, that should be good. But for me, Bitcoin can be a, is a good reserve uh, in terms of uh, store of value, but it's not clear that it's a good uh, way of payment uh, because of all the discussion about is it, is it scalable or not. So, uh, and 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 that's a that's a good discussion, I think, because when you say you compare with Pix, Pix really it's a centralized, it's from Central Bank of Brazil, but it's really scalable. You can lose a lot, no issue about that. Is Bitcoin? we can scale Bitcoin to be, to pay a coffee or something. It doesn't seem, for me, it doesn't seem to be the case, but I don't know if you have the same opinion here, but. Uh, Gustavo, we have seen well, a lot of, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Gustavo, we have seen a lot of uh, implementations, new implementations on Bitcoin, uh, like uh, segregated witness. Uh, now we have the, the Lightning Network as a ways to scale Bitcoin, but you are absolutely right. We don't know how uh, effective those uh, steps, those implementations will be. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I believe Bitcoin might not be uh, that very good means of payment yet, but we don't know. We need to wait and see how it goes. Well, uh, uh, this, is, this was discussed extensively a few years back. 
uh, when uh, 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 second rate of winters came up and the Lightning Network started came to come up. And uh, the Bitcoin core developers and the Bitcoin community chose to deliberately, uh, intentionally make Bitcoin not a very good uh, payment system uh, on purpose because uh, it was thought that its function as a, an alternative, a, res, uh, a reserve of value would be far more valuable, valuable to the world and that uh, the payment aspect should be relegated to, to other layers in the system such as uh, uh, the, the Lightning Network. But I, I, always, I always tell people the Lightning Network is not <laughs> Bitcoin. Even the even the scale is different. It, uh, Lightning Network is a uh, a kind of banking distributed banking system in, that keeps track of, keeps track of uh, which person owes money to which person. Uh, it's kind of like not not entirely different of, uh, of a bank uh, at, a, at a certain level. It's different because it it has the potential to be this more decentralized, uh, even though it somewhat tempts to centralization, but it has it can be more decentralized than banks, but in the in the essence, when when you uh, deposit money in your bank, for instance, you are actually not depositing money in your bank. You're giving your money away uh, to your bank, and your bank records how much it owes to you. The, the bank takes a, a debt in the same amount, in the same denom denomination, in the same currency, uh, back to you. And that's what the Lightning Network does, albeit with more uh, cryptographic guarantees, with a different architecture but it keeps track of, of uh, who owes money to whom. And, and, and there is this hope uh, using Bitcoin as a, 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 a the denominating currency. Uh, so the debts are denominating in Bitcoin. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that Lightning Network is different from Bitcoin. It's another thing entirely. It's some, uh, and even if, if, if even it's supposed to be denominated in the Bitcoin or on top of it. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the Bitcoin developers, deliberately chose this path for Bitcoin. Uh, it's not that it's not technically possible for blockchains in general and Bitcoin in particular to scale. It has been proven in other cryptocurrencies that it can be done, but uh, it was a deliberate choice on the part of the, uh, the, the Bitcoin developers. Uh, so uh, it's no wonder that Bitcoin has not proven to be a good uh, payment system. It was deliberately designed not to be that. And uh, so we have these alternative systems. And I always like to point out that even before the uh, Lightning Network came up, we had another second layer network uh, it, that was the cryptocurrency exchanges. They, uh, they were, the, they are, and they are, they still are the initial gateway for most users. 99.9% .9 of users buy their first, the, their Bitcoin and use mostly and sometimes exclusively their cryptocurrency exchanges or, or, or apps. They, uh, very few users these days uh, go to all the trouble of generating their key pairs and, uh, and, uh, sec and securing their, their mnemonic 24 word passphrases and things like that. Most users uh, want the convenience of, of uh, cryptocurrency exchanges and banks, uh, sadly. But that's the reality things. And, and, and perhaps the most important thing that we should get, keep in mind is that we uh, need to give users what users want. Uh, Rubens, uh, for our international audience, audience uh, I would like to take two steps back and get a little context about PIX, because okay. it's the new uh, central bank, Brazilian central bank payment system that works 24-7, mm -hmm. that works 24-7 and connects all uh, fintechs, banking, and all other payment sector uh, actors in a yeah. very, very uh, democrat way. Uh, and I also would like to 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 hear to hear something from Gustavo about that because he's he's following it by close. Yeah, no, Pix it's a, it's a it's an instant payment system. So Brazil Brazil was the fifth seventh uh, uh, country in the world to install that to have that. Uh, it was just released uh, 15 days ago in Brazil, so it's really new. That's why we have that in mind, right? 
but it's not more than a, a, a payment, an instant payment system that it's regulated. It's under the central bank uh, yes. overseen, and uh, and uh, it doesn't have anything to be to be with, Bit with Bitcoin. It's a different thing. It's it's centralized. Yeah. It's from the central bank, and Bitcoin we know that it's it's isn't. interbank. It's interbank uh, settlements in real time. You could say that. Could, could you not? It's, it's not just interbank. It's 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 between people in the in the end, right? I can send you yeah. a pix in an instant payment system, but the payment system it's a central bank payment system. It's regulated. Yeah, and but, it's managed by the central when bank. You say, but when you say but when you say that you send me, you send to my bank account. Yeah, you don't yeah that's to... that's the way the traditional financial market works, right? So that's yeah, that's right. traditional financial markets, not really. Uh, so it's interbank settlement. Yeah, but but Marco, at at zero bank, how Pix impact your vision about integrating crypto with the financial system? It's it's another rail. It's another fiat rail. It's a faster, nicer, uh, a shinier uh, uh, payment rail. And just like uh, our previous TED were, or the TED system were, that there was a previous uh, interbank settlement system that, that we had here in Brazil that was not 24 seven, but it was but usually to 20 minutes to, to settle. Uh, it's another rail, it's another fiat rail and we have to support it and we are working in supporting it, but uh, it's another fiat rail. Great. Okay. Uh... Does anyone want to talk anything else about it? I mean, uh, we've been discussing about, you know, Bitcoin as a payment. Uh, we, we talked a, a lot about uh, it, uh, you, some cases, some use cases. And uh, now I would like to, to start talking about Bitcoin as an investment asset. We, we, we just approached it a little bit about that. But uh, let me ask you. Due to the, the great volatility of the Bitcoin, uh, of this asset, how do you see the adoption of the Bitcoin as a possibility of allocation in the portfolio uh, or reserve of value? Yeah, in, my, in my opinion, it's the best asymmetry uh, available. And also, it's important to, to understand that in terms of volatility, Bitcoin volatility this year, it's quite less than real between the relation between real and dollar. So it's not that volatile as, as any more than uh, a few years ago. But uh, especially in Brazil, with these very low interest rates, it's very attractive to get these, these kind of alternative investments, especially when you have almost no bar barrier to convert your Bitcoin in reais. Uh, especially now with Pix that you can run it 24-7. So I think that the, the, tr the major trend is to get adoption increasing in Brazil in the next few years. And probably we're going to see uh, a, lot of, a, lo a lot more uh, demand, not just in Brazil, but uh, global, Glo globally. Okay, so, but uh, uh, since... Uh... Uh, a few years ago, the only way you can you could be exposed to Bitcoin was actually buying the Bitcoin, right? So you have to be the active the the, the, the asset itself in your wallet, and then you you were exposed to the to the uh, to the asset. Right now in Brazil, this year especially, we we had some great news about uh, you investing in Bitcoin, investing in Brazilian funds. I would like that uh, Gustavo talk a little bit about that. I know that you interviewed some of the guys that created these funds. So I would, I'd like you to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, I think the first thing is that uh, exactly what Safiri said. So Bitcoin is really uh, has no correlation with the traditional market, which is really good as a, uh, as to, put, to be put in a portfolio when you're managing the risk return of the portfolio as a role. So it makes a lot of sense for all portfolios have some part of it in Bitcoins in terms of a risk return. Uh, the point a few years ago is that how you do that? So how do you as a, as a financial fund or as a person buy Bitcoin? So it was it, at the beginning, it was all OTC, which was very difficult for the people that doesn't, doesn't uh, come from the tech environment. Uh, then we came to the exchange that you can buy on an exchange and get the, the Bitcoin exchange. Now we are moving for some financial products 
that kind of uh, represents the Bitcoin. They are not really the Bitcoin itself. The people doesn't have their pri the private key on it. But in terms of financial, uh, in terms of investment, you have more or less the same uh, effect. So it uh, variates as the Bitcoin variates. So we have some funds, not just in Brazil, but abroad. Some really fun, uh, some, there are big funds in, in, uh, abroad that are in Brazil as well. There are funds that we call it uh, passive funds. They just buy Bitcoin for every cent that goes to the, to the funds. So in terms of uh, uh, cryptocurrency, it doesn't really make much sense because uh, the private key is not yours. But in terms of uh, usability, in terms of uh, uh, putting that uh, very easy for the common people to invest, it makes a lot of sense. And that's what we are saying about the Brazilian funds, that they really do that. It's a vehicle for you not to have Bitcoins, but to, have, to invest in a, in a fund that invests in Bitcoin and deals with all these uh, private keys and public keys and all these issues that for the normal people is not really, most of the, most of the time is not what they really want, right? They really want someone uh, as a bank or as a regulator that, uh, or not that they don't want, that they are really used to. I think that's the, the correct word. They are used to have someone that has the custody of uh, their assets. With Bitcoin, mm -hmm. if you have the private key, you have the custody, so you have all the cybersecurity and all these things that you need to deal with that most of the people doesn't want in the end. So uh, just to conclude, I think that this will help, will help a lot for the people to see more and more Bitcoin as an alternative asset as an investment, and that will help a lot on the adoption of Bitcoin in the end. Gustavo. Great, Gustavo. That was a very good point of view. Yeah, please, without us. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to make Gustavo a question. Uh, is it correct to say that people feel more uh, comfortable uh, because they don't have the knowledge or because uh, they do feel more comf comfortable when investing in a fund instead of uh, buying Bitcoin. Is that correct? I think so, because it, it's regulated, right? In the, in the end, when you invest in a thing that's regulated, it's the way you use to invest in everything. So you, have, you know the regulation, know that there will be some uh, custodian, some central bank, some uh, or CVM or someone dealing uh, with that. So in the end, you're not going for a scam or things like that. So I think that that's the, the normal view uh, in my view. But, but, I think, but I think it's worth remembering that uh, a lot of people did invest in other uh, in, in, uh, uh, schemes proposed by some companies which turned out to be scams. So, uh, and, and, and we got quite a burn in terms of, of reputation for Bitcoin in a few, uh, a few years because uh, huge high profile companies that were offering Bitcoin based in Bitcoins or, or so they said uh, Bitcoin based investments, uh, they, they uh, went bust. And uh, that, uh, that really hurt the, the, the Bitcoin image, uh, the, the perception of what Bitcoin is. Uh, sadly, many people got to think that Bitcoin is associated with scams because of those high profile scammers. So I, my understanding is that um, the, uh, the, the fact that it's regulated provides some comfort, as you said, to many people, uh, so, so many people that it is a more, they, that if something goes awry, they have ways to, to get their money back. Because uh, as, as we were discussing prior to the show, um, those, peoples, those people that were hurt by those schemes uh, the, those scams are likely not to see their money back, and uh, being regulated uh, is something that uh, that uh, gives people comfort. And I agree with you on that. But it's it's as we've been saying from the beginning, uh, people don't really want. And, and and I think that another way to to see what your words is that people don't don't really want Bitcoin. They want exposure to the, the Bitcoin volatility. They want fiat. They don't want Bitcoin. But, but okay. it, helps, it, 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 it happens the same with uh, dollar, for example. Some people invest in, do, in funds that invest in dollars, for, uh, for example. They don't really sometimes want the dollar 
uh, yeah. itself, but they invest in something that represents the dollar. So that's the way, more or less, the traditional financial market or the way that the people are used to, to, to deal in terms of investment. Yeah, yeah, sure. That, that said, I think it's worth pointing out that there is a thriving, a, a very small uh, thriving minority of people that, that uh, like to learn about Bitcoin, about, about uh, self-sovereignty, about uh, taking control of their own money and all those value, those, those uh, uh, deep uh, values of Bitcoin. But the sad truth is that they are a, a dwindling minority. Uh, the vast majority of people, they want Bitcoin just as a way to get more fiat. Okay, but uh, let me ask you, do you believe that um, we're seeing the market, I mean, uh, going to a rec uh, uh, regulating the Bitcoin and some funds re already regulated, uh, uh, making it possible for people to invest in, in Bitcoin and to be exposed to, the, to this asset? Uh, this was impossible to think a few years ago, and for me, it means that you know the regular market, the, the traditional market, is looking for Bitcoin and crypto assets as something that really can, came to stay and to you know to be the future. So right now, uh, it's a great. Uh, uh, we don't have uh, too much money already invested in that in Brazil, but it's growing. But that's a sign of that the, the traditional marketing is looking now with good eyes for this asset, right? What do you think about? Definitely. You're asking me. You're, who, who, who are you addressing? Anyone who, who wants to talk? You, anyone can. Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, Gustavo, go please. Ahead. Yeah, go Gustavo, ahead. Ahead. You, are, you are the economic guy. Please go ahead and you're the first one to talk. I, I, I'll be very brief here. I completely agree with you. Okay, great. You, Marco, or you without us? Well, uh, I think that it's 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 uh, it's good that the markets are are uh, waking up to the virtues of Bitcoin as a asset class because uh, it uh, legitimizes it and makes it more palatable to people, more palatable to the to to politicians, to regulators, to anyone else. But we are not really regulating Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency. We are Bitcoin, a second-hand market that mirrors the, the, the actions and the properties of Bitcoin. I always, uh, I always try to posit that cryptocurrencies themselves should be as free from regulation as possible. So there can be innovation, there can, they can be unburdened as unburdened as possible uh, in terms uh, of being able to innovate, as long as, of course, they don't do, they, they, they don't do nothing that patently breaks the law. But uh, we are not talking about regulating Bitcoin. We're talking about regulating a kind of uh, a, a second-hand market that mirrors the, uh, the, uh, the Bitcoin action, the Bitcoin price action uh, elsewhere. And it is, a, it is a form of centralization in a way because uh, we, and, and, and it robs people from a few things that should, I think that should be practiced more, such as uh, self-sovereignty and, and uh, uh, the, the ability to, to actually own and have and maintain your own money. But well, no, no, uh, people doesn't want that, in my view, Kano. Yeah, but, I know, I know, and I agree don't with want you. This, this liability, because with this comes a lot of liability, right, for you to control. Yes. And uh, I don't yes, know no, people. I agree, I agree wholeheartedly, but what I'm trying to say is exactly this, is exactly this. People don't want Bitcoin, people want fiat. That's what I'm saying all along. There's just, uh, let me just add, there's one, one other side on that is that uh, we are talking about uh, uh, individuals, but with what we are seeing the last six months, a lot, lot of adoption in terms of institu institutional adoption. Right. Some companies that are buying Bitcoins for their cash, uh, MicroStrategy, a NASDAQ co uh, listed company was the, is the great example nowadays, right? But there's a lot of others that are kind of diversifying that and buying a little bit of Bitcoin also from a kind of a, an institutional uh, side. So that's a, also a great news in terms of uh, Bitcoin adoption, in my view. Yeah, the digital scarcity investment 
this is, is getting popular, even in very high profile people from financial markets. And I think it's just a, a terms of time to get more, more influx of money come from other traditional investments uh, migrating to crypto market. Because uh, when, when you cross the, the line and you really understand why this concept is important and now about the global environment, it's almost natural to, to get some exposure. Yeah, and uh, uh, what Ruben said in the beginning, like uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are here to stay. Uh, there's no turning back. It's a marvelous technology and people must make the most of it. And I'm sure uh, if it's going to be Bitcoin or not, but uh, it's a technology that's here to stay, definitely. Great, great to hear that, that we all agree about that. And uh, we are in the last uh, six minutes of our debate. Uh, I would like to, to, I mean, to give you free now, free uh, option to talk anything up, uh, that you want to talk about. I'd like to, to ask Safir Felix about, I mean, I mean you, you are now one of the directors of the AB Crypto, right? That is the Brazilian Crypto Association. And I'd like to see how are, are you managing, how uh, uh, if the institutional uh, uh, companies are getting into, are asking and approaching the AB Crypto for you know, understanding better the, scen the scenario of, uh, of the Brazilian crypto on the, Tell me a little bit about what you're uh, going through in the AB Crypto. Okay. Our focus is to get a very good relationship and dialogue with public uh, institutions, especially uh, the central bank, the CVM, and all other potential regulators of the market. So during the last two years, we are working really hard to educate them and also to trying to translate all these complex uh, context and terms to, 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 to something more palatable for a regular audience. So I think that we are getting very, very good progress during these last few months, especially uh, after the Brazilian Fiscal Authority uh, create uh, uh, an instruction that provides a very clear framework about how to report our crypto transactions. And also uh, after all the activities related to intermediation, custody, and trading of crypto is now officially uh, recognized as a economic activity in Brazil. So I think that in the next few years, probably we're going to solve this regulatory uh, gray zone and we, we're going to wrap, wrap up and get all the conditions to get even more adoption. Great, great, Safiri. Uh, there's one aspect that we didn't talk too much I just remember now, uh, we talked about the economic aspect, we talk about the usability aspect, and I'd like to, to invite now Vitaltas to talk a little bit about the regulation and the crimes that is happening in Brazil using crypto, Bitcoin and crypto, and how are you uh, fighting them? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, criminals, they're always using new technology, new stuff for committing crimes. And in Brazil, it is not different. So it's up to us to make uh, law enforcement agencies aware that, as we have said before, it's a it's a no turning back. Now we we cannot we won't go back. It's a, a one way road now, and law enforcement must be aware that those technologies we we will always be there. Uh, Bitcoin, of course, Bitcoin is not illegal, but uh, unfortunately, people commit crimes and get money out of it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and regulation in Brazil, it's still at the very early stage. Uh, what Safiri has said about the, the fiscal authority with the instructions for... Uh, 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 with instructions for the the for people who, who who are buying Bitcoin and everything, that's a first step that was really really good. And I'm sure the scenario will get even better. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to regulate. Uh, as Marco also said, we are not trying to regulate Bitcoin itself. We must uh, be aware that it's uh, be more deep than that. 
but I'm sure uh, we'll, we'll get to some point in which we'll be able uh, to use Bitcoin, to repress crimes uh, related to Bitcoin and have a good environment to, to everyone. Great. Uh, so we are just going to the end. We have uh, uh, four more minutes. I'm going to give you one minute for each one of you to finalize your, your last considerations. Please, let's start with uh, Safiri. I'd like to say thank you for, for all, all you guys and everyone that are watching us. And probably next year, I hope that we, we match together in person. And uh, I also would like to thank for the invite and congrats on the organization. Thank you. Marco, please. I, I think that uh, we in Brazil, we have come a long way with uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, they started being mostly unknown and, and the niche of a few technicians. And now uh, it's primarily because of the price action and the desire that people have for more crypto. It's becoming, or for more fiat, it's becoming more well known. And I would like to invite everyone in the audience to get, to get engaged uh, by your Bitcoin. Uh, and more importantly, not only buy your Bitcoin for the fiat it can provide you, but go the extra mile. Try to uh, research and understand because Bitcoin has a very beautiful technology behind it. It has a very beautiful ethos and a very beautiful uh, political opportunities for people in terms of self-sovereignty and, and control of your own destiny. And uh, this is something that I think that should not be forgotten. And it, it still is within people's grasps and it, was, it will probably likely be. But it is true, everything that we've been seeing here, that uh, most people just want a crypto bank. And for that, if you uh, Google up, you will see a number of interesting alternatives that you might consider. But it's great uh, that we have been, uh, Safiri's work at the Abbey Crypto has been uh, uh, pivotal in, in straightening the, the dialogue with the many institutions. So uh, we are very thankful for his, for his brilliant work and patience because it's a, it's a, a exercise in patience. Uh, and uh, I would like also to thank, to, to thank to Vitaltas uh, because he is one of the few guys in this space uh, that has the right, the, the mind and the heart in the right place, uh, mm -hmm. and and he's a guy to he's a guy that that will, will be protecting us from any criminals out there. And I would like to thank uh, uh, to thank Gustavo for its fantastic insights in 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 the economics aspects and institutional aspect of it. So it has been great to be debating with you guys. So, yeah, and I thank you, Rubens, for the invite again. Gustavo. I'd like to thank you all for the, for the panel. It was really great to have to, have, to discuss with all, uh, to discuss with you here, and Rubens and the organization for the inviting. It was also great pleasure. I also hope to be there in the next year as well. So uh, preferable in presence, live, uh, so we can talk uh, with each other. And uh, for the public in general, I would like to give a message in terms of education. So, guys. It's here, it's, it comes to stay, it, there's no coming back. So the, the earlier you understand the technology, understand the, what it is, the better for you. So I think that's, a, that's the message. So there's a lot of ways for you to educate yourself on that, but you need to take the first step to that, on that. Educate yourself, understand it. As soon as you understand it, you're gonna see and you're gonna love it as we all hear love it because the technology and the things that we, it provides for our individuals it's it's amazing great great vitaltas your last words please oh thank you very much thank you rubens thank you to the others it was great taking part in this uh it was fantastic i'm sure i sure i'm sure i learned a lot today and uh to everyone uh blockchain is a beautiful technique uh technology uh, it must be uh, one of the uh, nicest things I've ever studied. And there's only one thing that I really regret is that I didn't start studying Bitcoin before. I wish I could have done it like many years be behind. But uh, unfortunately, I have to keep up. Uh, but thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rubens. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we are finishing this panel, this Brazilian panel, which was a, such a great pleasure to be with all of you. 
You're great guys. We have great, great guys and girls uh, building the Brazilian ecosystem. So let's keep doing a great job and uh, the 2021 will be together for sure. Okay. Thank you very much for all of you. It was a pleasure. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye-bye.